Here we'll take a look at the noise level in oscilloscope. At this point I have no signal connected to the oscilloscope input and I've got the input set to 50 ohm load. At these settings I should be looking at the full bandwidth of the instrument. In this case it's a 2 gigahertz bandwidth oscilloscope and the digitizer is sampling at 10 giga samples per second. So I'm going to adjust the sensitivity range from the current setting which is 50 millivolts per division down to 1 millivolt per division. Now the Rodin Schwartz RTO features a 1 millivolt per division gain setting. Most oscilloscopes, most digital oscilloscopes, do not have a 1 millivolt per division setting. Rather, when you adjust the volts per division setting below either 5 or 10 millivolts per division, they actually use a digital zoom to get down to the 1 millivolt per division range. In this oscilloscope, that range is actually a gain stage on the amplifier, which gives it extremely low noise performance at this very low setting. In order to have a closer look at the noise, I'm going to turn on a measurement. So I'm going to select from my toolbar the measure control and I'm going to measure the waveform and here I've got a measurement for amplitude showing. I'm going to change that measurement to the standard deviation because that will give us an indication of what the RMS noise is. So select standard deviation, whoops, close the window and now if you can look in here you can see the millivolts of the noise. In this case it's running about 150 microvolts RMS for the noise level. This is an extremely low noise level performance for the oscilloscope of this type. Now, of course, noise comes from many sources in a oscilloscope, including thermal noise from the amplifiers, but also interleaving artifacts from the digitizers. All oscilloscopes that sample at very high rates, an example, of course, here is 10 giga samples per second, will interleave two to four to maybe eight digitizers and maybe even more to get the sample rate that high. Building lower speed digitizers, of course, is more cost effective, but you need to accurately interleave them to prevent such things as interleaving spurs in the frequency domain which manifest themselves as noise in the time domain. I'm going to take a closer look at the frequency domain by selecting the FFT tool on the instrument and do an FFT of that channel waveform. Now on the bottom here in blue you see the frequency domain response and it's going from 0 to 2 gigahertz. I'm going to change the settings on the FFT to get a better look at that. I'll increase the resolution bandwidth of our FFT so that a decrease the resolution bandwidth, I'm sorry, so that we can see a little more detail. And then I'm going to turn on a little averaging so that we can see smoothed out noise floor. So now you're looking at the noise floor of the instrument here and all you can see is that there's virtually no spurious on here. In fact there's a couple of spurs here and those are local signals being picked up from the air. Interleaving spurs are basically non-existent. The other point you can see here again is this is 0 gigahertz and this is 2 gigahertz. At the 1 millivolt per division range we're still operating at full bandwidth on the instrument. There's no bandwidth limiting. Many oscilloscopes will actually limit the bandwidth on these low volts per division settings as a way to reduce the noise. Of course, if you bought a 2 gigahertz oscilloscope and you set it to 1 millivolts per division, you'd expect to still have a 2 gigahertz oscilloscope.